from Dr. Todd Lee, 2012 IFBB North American Lightweight Bodybuilding Champion, and I'm a medical doctor. I'm here with MyoMuscle.com to talk to you about myostatin. Myostatin sucks. Myostatin is the protein that stops your muscles from growing. I mean, why would you want that, right? That sounds so stupid. Well, if your heart keeps growing, then it's going to become non-functional and you'll have congestive heart failure and die. So it's really tricky to find ways to inhibit myostatin growth without making people die. So what, let me explain myostatin a little bit. Okay, so there's a myostatin gene, MST adenine. So it's basically the consonants from the word myostatin. Not terribly creative and pretty easy to keep track of. Um, then it, what, there is two genes, right? There's one from your mom, one from your dad. Those determine your myostatin genes. Now, they did a lot of experiments on dogs. I know, we are bird, right? Racing dogs called whippets. They did, and then they experimented on two different lines of bulls, the Piedmontese bull and the Belgian blue bull, to figure out how these things um, react towards not having the normal levels of myostatin. And they also experimented on rats. It's really complicated, and it's in my article on the subject of myostatin. But basically, this is what you got to know. If you don't have myostatin at all, you get really muscular and your face gets deformed. If you've got one of the genes operable for myostatin, or if you've got monoclonal antibodies that bind to the myostatin, stopping it binding to the actin receptor type 2B, then you get, I think, about a 60% bonus towards your total muscle mass. So if you normally have 50 pounds of muscle, you got 80 pounds of muscle now. Um, and they've also found that if you were to block the receptors or not express the receptors, you see a dramatic increase. Now, there's another hormone called folostatin, and that binds to things all over your body and stops them from binding to the actin receptor. It also binds itself. So, using folostatin as a myostatin inhibitor would result in all types of chaos and all types of organ tissues. Now, what they did do is they refined folostatin down to folostatin 344. Apparently, that's the folostatin produced in muscle tissue. Now, what the goal was with this type of treatment was they use a cold virus, and they use the transcription elements from the cold virus, and they scooped out the actual make-you-sick part, in theory, and they included the genes that would cause someone to upregulate their folostatin production in muscle. So it's supposed to make myostatin, I mean, folostatin 344 upregulated in gene expression, which then will bind to the myostatin and stop the myostatin from binding from the activin 2B receptor. And that's what inhibits muscle growth. So it inhibits an inhibitor of muscle growth, in other words. Now, what they found was that in the rats that they tested it on, there's a 300% increase in muscle mass. When the humans use it, they're finding that they get a cold virus and they complain and whine about it, and then they gain maybe one pound of muscle. So is the stuff you get on the black market for 200 bucks a pop, buy one, get one free, as effective as the stuff they're giving the mice? I don't know. One thing they did say was that mice have 20 times the level of myostatin than humans do. So the jury's still out on how we can inhibit myostatin. What they have found that's the best mechanism for myostatin inhibition is to not release myostatin in the first place. And the best way to do that is to use creatine. I know that's not a very exciting answer. That is not something new and, um, that you didn't know about, and it's not some way to spend a ton of money on some illegal website. It's just basic creatine is going to help you. The other thing is myostatin seems to get released after about eight weeks of muscle growth. So you run eight weeks of bulking cycles, then you can basically go PCT for four weeks, or you can switch to a cut cycle. My experience is after 12 weeks of dieting, most people start falling apart. So a good regimen to follow would be eight weeks bulk, 12 weeks cut, eight week bulk, 12 weeks cut if you're overweight. If you're underweight, eight weeks bulk, four weeks PCT and cut, eight weeks bulk, four weeks PCT and cut. And then use creatine. I mean, if you want some creatine, Wicked 2.1 has creatine in it, and Wicked 2.1 is the best pre-workout ever, because I say so, because I made it. This is Todd Lee, MD, with MyMuscle.com.